Hello everybody, welcome to the Ballad of Eliod the Nom. This is the fourth one in our episode 12 part of four-parter. We started off with Flagelsnarp, then we had one for Dimitriov, then we've had one for Daka. Now it's Eliod's the tur- Eliod the Nom's turn, and uh, I am going to duck out and leave you two guys to it. Eliod the Turd? He said Eliod the Turd, he definitely yes, said Eliod the Turd. <laughs> Well, hello everybody. I am I am Eliod the Nom, a level five rock gnome of the life cleric of the life domain. Um, and we're currently journeying back from Victor, right? Having just you know had a showdown with uh, Night Demon and finished off Molaram. Uh, I mean, Jack Boy can tell you all about that. And uh, yeah, so um, similar. So this is this is this is the ballad of Eliod the Nom, um, Eliod. <clears throat> Is the last of a of a, of a simple four parter, as I mentioned in the other ones. For anybody who uh, who didn't catch other ones or was getting caught up, this is kind of it's kind of nice to do these these um, these little cleanup sessions where individuals kind of get their own time, if only for a, you know an hour, hour and a half, hour and 15, 45 minutes, whatever. To just kind of go over you know what their character would because not the, the party doesn't spend twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, you know, hanging out together. So. Um, as as with the other ones, Elliot the Nam, as with the other uh, the other three episodes, the other three uh, ballads, if you will, we kind of left them right as you know we we kind of explored the mental state of each of the characters, and it, as as you remember, Elliot, you had just finished up when we cut it last time, you had just finished up speaking to um, speaking to Night Demon. And we pick it up literally right there as you're walking south through those columns. Do you, do you remember the columns on the map? Yep. And, you know, obviously there's some some thoughts that go into that, right, of, of what just friggin' happened. And everybody's kind of quiet and silent. And I, I kind of asked everybody, you know, just kind of give me – Give me what's going on mentally. You know, if we were to get that the the slight voiceover, you know, of uh, in Elliot's head as he's walking out of there, what's what's going on in his head? Yeah, yeah. So I, I I've been in a bit of turmoil, right? You know, I I was pretty um, devastated. I I, you know, I I've been feeling bad about um, uh, about the, the the news I had from uh from from my old master, right? From Druthin Cobblethorpe. He just uh, you know came to came to tell me. Uh, sorry, I, I, he's his his you know compatriot came to tell me that he he passed away recently, uh, and uh, so I wasn't feeling great about that to start with, uh, and then there was the whole business in the in the in the catacombs where like you know I, I blame myself for letting Faps die and I'm I'm feeling pretty troubled, and I was you know planning on splitting with the party once our business business here was was done, uh, and we'd done all we can to help to help uh, the other people who still were at the manor. Um, so so yeah, I, I'm I'm still feeling that. I'm still feeling pretty bad. I'm still feeling pretty torn up. I'm you know still blaming myself for all of that that happened. But I'm also um, a bit more focused now because I've just had a chat with Night Demon, and I'm kind of infuriated by my interaction with him. To be honest, I, I, you know, he really ground my gears, honestly. And um, uh, but I'm. I'm determined as well, right? I have a bit of a focus, like I say. Uh, there's these three sisters that uh, you know he has uh, some somehow with him, and you know he set us this sort of challenge or this 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 deal uh, that he'll kill one and and take one, and 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 one will you know come with us or whatever, come back to our our realm. Um, so so I, I I'm intent on trying to you know break this deal. I'm intent on trying to um, save, save all three of them. So I'm very focused. As I'm, as we're leaving uh, the place. So, but how did you feel about Night Demon, him or her itself? Because mm. we still haven't determined what, what's going on there. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 a good question. Um, I I don't understand a lot. It's like like you say, you haven't determined anything, and and that's troubling to me because you know I'm I'm a a pretty kind of logical minded gnome. Yeah, I'm an engineer. You know, I like things to be nice and straight and ordered and nothing here is ordered at all. I don't understand the steps from one thing uh, to the other, you know. I don't understand what happened with Laura, the, the Tulloch woman who 
was here, you know, decades ago and, and then went missing when all the disappearance was happening. I don't understand why Night Demon has the three girls, which from reading Lau's uh, journal, I can, I, I'm surmising were her three daughters and, you know, from, from how they look, you know, somewhat similar to the, the features I saw on Faps and Finches, two other members of the family. Uh, I don't understand what happened to the archaeologist who was in the journal with Lau. I don't understand why Molaram didn't succeed uh, in this summoning of Night Demon when he was previously doing it and what happened then. I don't understand what he's been doing in the intervening years and why he just started back up again when uh, the two brothers, Faps and Finches, arrived back at the manor. So I, I, I really... I'm kind of desperate to answer these questions and I'm and I'm and I'm worried about them and I don't understand most of all most of all I don't understand Night Demon himself. Is it my interactions with him were very frustrating, he was very intractable. He 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 claimed to be a being of logic and emotion, but his his actions don't seem to be logical and his only emotion seemed to be some kind of capricious devilment. Yeah, you know, he was a very sort of whimsical sort of oh look at me, aren't I a wacky guy? And and he claims to be an old god and I'm I'm very concerned because for the limited information I know about old gods, it seems strange to me that he would take such an interest in the affairs of our realm, in the such, such detailed minutiae of the affairs of our realm, and that he would even be capable of doing so. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking he may not be who he seems. Interesting. So what about the ring on your finger now? Uh, the, the ring's still there, and uh, Demetrio possesses the other one, I believe. No, 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 the one that Night oh. Demon had appear. Oh, oh, sorry, yeah, wait, hang on, I've got, oh no, yeah, I don't, I don't think I even have a ring, do I? It's just Demetrio that has the other ring, yeah, yeah, so, um, uh, yeah, well, so he gave me the ring, right, he said, you can come back and talk to me whenever you want. <sighs> it, it's, it's interesting, um, I, to be honest, I've, um, as as I as I as I'm leaving, I'm already contemplating. You know, I I want to go back and talk to him, right? I want to go back and find out more. Uh, but ultimately, I feel like, you know, I'm I'm part of this party for a reason, and you know, more more heads are better than one. So I think, okay, it's probably best if I don't go alone. It's probably best if I if I go back with with the other members of the group at some point to to talk to him. And I'm also feeling like. Well, I was just standing there talking with him, and I got n nowhere. You know, I need to go and do some research first, right? I need to go and try and have a think, you know, uh, about exactly what can be done to sort of get out of this situation. So I, I, I'm sure I'll, I'll use the ring at some point, but probably not yet. Yep. So <clears throat> I, um, I kind of figured, I kind of, I kind of played it out to the others, and they somewhat agreed. It, it's tough when we do a little bit of a separation there. But that the party would probably be relatively of internal thought, right? As you're first leaving, like you're, you're contemplating this whole situation because it means something different to everybody. Yeah, I'm, right? I'm certainly very, very internal right now. Yeah. Yeah, and so it, and and you know, you you had just met this individual. You thought you were going to have to to battle to the death against Molaram one last time. You know, there were there were um, concerns. The daughters appeared. And then all of a sudden, Molaram is a is a is a, a blood splat on the, on the on the ground on the on the ash heap of humanity, right? No manity, and um, you know everything made a make made a swift left turn. And um, as you were leaving, right, the the determination was, let's get the hell out of here, not let's look around and kind of you know try to find loot the place, see what the hell else is here. It's Hey, we've got you know we we we've got the three daughters. We've got whom you believe to be the three daughters. We've got um, uh, the ring now on Elliot's finger. We've got this decision to make in quote unquote ten days time. You know, and, and the decision was made obviously to go back to Victor at the end of the last episode, and and you did that ultimately, right? You took the the half a day, just over half a day journey to the crossroads again. Spent the night there. It's the best place, right? And then headed back down to um down to victa another day there and then we kind of agreed amongst the party that the next that these episodes would last about two days right because you know everybody's bruised and battered armors chinked leathers torn um there's a lot of other things to kind of clean up right and we had talked about you know as <clears throat> as p as you all got like within sight of victa that the first kind of words would kind of come out a little bit and 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 Flargo Snarp was very very adamant right very adamant that hey 
we've got to break this deal with this guy no matter what. We've got to get out from completely underneath his thumb. We don't want anything to do with this guy. I've had interactions with quote unquote beings before, so on and so forth, right? And DACA was a little bit indifferent because he's like, hey man, we did our job. We took care of Mola Ram, you know, kind of sideways, but we did it. And Dmitriev was, as, as his same standpoint was, hey, it's better to save one than to lose all three. I'm not sure why we're taking so long to make this decision necessarily, but I still agree with, you know, heading back to Victor and kind of, you know, licking our wounds a little bit. And as the four of you kind of come back into Victor, you know, you come through the gates, um, uh, you come through the gates from the north to the south, and um, the rowdy gnome is immediately to your right. And, and you look and you know Flargle Snarp immediately takes his leave and heads off towards the um, towards the Tower of the Country Wizard, towards uh, Oriolensis Tower. Um, Dimitriov uh, immediately rallies with, um, with Elon and with the seven man servants that are still alive from the manor. Um, heads over to Mispelled Tree. You know what he's going to kind of do. He, you know, you guys all kind of discuss this a little bit. Daka goes immediately to report off to um, to Kalon the Third, and uh, kind of tell him, "Hey, it's you know, because it's his job as a gray. He was the one originally tasked with this. It's his job to you know go in and make sure that that occurred. Also, you knew that Daka was going to have um, uh, concerns about little Jimmy, which uh, you know. So there, there, there's a lot there's a lot of things weaving." And everybody kind of looked over to you, and you were somewhat, as I assumed you would be, just very internalized, just like you were after after Faps fell. Right? You were still talking when you needed to, but it, you're very you're you're very internally contemplative. And we figured that you were going to make an immediate right turn, head right into the rowdy gnome, and get a glass of the best gnomish wine that you could find, and just kind of figure things out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I actually, um, I saw, I saw some wine in the uh, in the catacombs, right? But yeah, as as we're leaving, I'm just not at all thinking about that. So I don't know if the others picked it up or not. But I, I, you, I, you like... said you picked up two bottles, so you do have oh. those two bottles with you. Yes. Oh, okay, F fair enough. Well, uh, um, yeah, maybe maybe I take out one of those. I don't know, but yeah, uh, head head into the rowdy gnome, yeah, and um, probably find myself just a quiet corner. Just for now, I want to be alone. Um, and yeah, I I know. Um, so maybe maybe Flagel's not talked about it a little on the journey. I don't know, uh, but uh, I I was already aware. Of course, I saw his back right. I, I saw him when he uh, when he disrobed in the in the field. So I was aware he had this um, uh, the 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 dragon interaction. I can't remember exactly yes. how how yep. it was, but yeah. But yeah, I kind I kind of feel like I kind of feel as though. If what we are dealing with is an old god, then it's kind of a different scale altogether, right? I'm not sure. I'm not sure how many parallels can be drawn, but uh, but who knows? Who knows if it is an old god or not? Like I say, I'm I'm kind of curious about that. But yeah, I I'm in the rowdy now. I I hide away into the corner for now, and I you know I, I have a drink. So let's let's do that. So give me a history check, and give me it at, at, at advantage. We're we've, we're doing the same thing that we did with the rest of the party because I want to kind of know. I want to come up with like what Eliad may Eliad the Nam may know. Okay. Okay, so a fifteen. So, from your perspective, right, from the Gnomish perspective, the Gnomish peoples are the oldest peoples historically in our in our land in Solarian, right? Okay. You have the oldest. You may not be the the literal oldest. As far as there may have been somebody, but you have the oldest known histories of all that have been discovered to date. Right now, there could, you know, something else could happen, you know, later and so on and so forth. Um, the only thing theoretically that would predate the Gnomish peoples are the dragons. Okay. And perhaps other races out there whom uh, we'll call it humanity, but humanity covers humans, gnomes goblins the, the player characters if you will um humanity has interacted with to date extensively meaning that they actually have have had interactions and understand that they that they're that they have an older place in the world um 
there are the gods, of course, and you and I have discussed that a little bit, right? The gods can rail. They, there, there's there's gods, there's patrons, there's deities, there's demigods. You know, there's a, there's a whole spectrum. Some are religious based. Some are more men. Um, some are more uh, uh, thinking based and or logical based. So in your case, we kind of discussed that, right? And and it, and and, it, and the chief engineer is much more of a logical individual, right? And the gnomish peoples um, tend to either, and it's not an internal war of any kind, but they tend to either migrate towards the logic or they migrate towards the religion. And the chief engineer kind of embodies both of that because uh, as you understand from your histories and from your studies, the chief engineer understood that if his people were going to pursue logic, his or her people, whatever the chief engineer may be, um, that they would need a means to protect themselves and be able to, and that's where the religion side of things came in, and specifically the healers, right? Sure. Now, there's gnome artificers, there's gnome wizards, all of that good stuff as well. But we're talking about the quote-unquote, I don't even want to call it a church, but the church of the um, of the chief engineer, right? Yeah. Um, and... So going back to the histories of the gnomish peoples, right? You're just you have you have some of the greatest libraries known to humanity. Mm, yes. In Solarium, right? Specifically, your library at the um, at um, Edenome. You have one of the finest libraries there that you know of. Now, of course, as you know. Until you know what you want to search for in a library like that, you don't know what's in a library like that, right? Because what are the chances you're just going to come up with, I'll just research something called an old god and let's see if it's just even there, right? Um, there's, as you know about um, um, libraries, libraries can contain books, tomes, and all of that good stuff. But they can also contain scrolls. They can contain... Um, Histories written on tablets, you know, think of old cuneiform, things like that, that we find here on Earth, right? Um, <clears throat> so it's not as if everything is on a bookshelf, right? A library is a place of study. Um, a library is also a place of storage for when you don't know where to put other things, right? So there's no real, I don't want to say that there aren't museums per se, but... A, a library kind of covers that as well. In addition, in your gnomish libraries, and, th and this goes along with some of the other races' libraries, this would also be where you would have your family histories, family trees. They could be traced back a great deal. <clears throat> um, and can, you know, so-and-so migrated in, so-and-so did this, so-and-so the, you know, all of that stuff. So... There's also all of those histories are there as well. That's where, or at least I would I should say, that's where they would be located. They may not be there, but that's where you would search for them if that was something you were searching for. Um, you would still have access to it. Whether you would have access to 100% of it is a different conversation, right? Because you're still a, you're still a copper. Um, you may have lost your holy symbol. You know, it broke. When you rolled a, when you rolled a one, you know you either you're either a twenty or a one when you're trying to talk to the to the, um, to the uh, chief engineer. Um, but it, it, it as you remember the last episode, it broke or sorry two episodes it broke and you just left it on the ground, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was before you even um, entered into the main temple area. That was back when when Faps fell. Um, but that's what you kind of know. You don't have any personal knowledge about the old gods, and it's spelled A-U-L-D-G-H-O-D-S, just for your knowledge. <clears throat> uh, G what? At A-U-L-D-G-H-O-D-S, yeah. the old gods. Okay, okay, cool. Yep. So it doesn't necessarily reference to a god itself. Um, okay. But that's, that's, you know, and that's a little bit of, you know, out of character, but I've got to tell you how it's spelled and all, you know, there, there's got to be, a, you know, it's, um, and you know that, um, that Flargal Snarp did reference that at the end of last episode as well. Well, I understand the old gods and, 
or I've I've heard of the old gods. I think is what he said, if I remember correctly. Maybe that'll play out a little bit more next episode. Um, but yeah, as far as the old gods are concerned, you don't have any personal knowledge. You don't have any recollection of studying them. You don't have any recollection of them being in any of your classes, anything like that. As far as you're concerned, you know the 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 Gnomish peoples just have a great history, and the beginning of that history starts with the chief engineer. Sure. So you enter into the Rowdy Gnome, right? You open the f very familiar door. You see the very familiar face of Nam Foodle behind the main bar, right? And she's looking at you and she, uh, again, you know, a very concerned face, right? She, she's, seen, she, she's seen you come and go now last two and a half weeks plus or minus mm. i want to say as we've been doing this ep or this um this arc yeah and yeah. she's seen a myriad of faces as you've walked in the door right she's seen you know and this you know and you can tell that she's very concerned for you as you know as she would be right you know you're one of the few gnomes in the city this is your home so on and so forth and you say you so you walk in the door and then what happens next when you see this familiar face um, so I, I, I attempt to avoid him at first. Uh, I, like I say, I, I take myself into the corner. I have my own wine with me, um, uh, and a goblet I, in my bag somewhere, I guess. And I just, I pour myself a drink. I, you know, I'm, I'm like Aragorn in Lord of the Rings in the Prancing Pony. I'm just shrunk back into the, I'm very small as well. So I shrink very easily as so I'm, I'm right in the back and of the... Yeah, and there's several like gnomish chairs, right? There's yeah, it's not yeah, like this yeah. is that you don't have to like hop up onto a human sized chair, right? This is a gnomish location. This is not a traditional now humans are more than welcome and so are any of the other races. But there are corners and there are there, there are smaller couches here and there. There's and it very much, you know, it's bright brighter colors. It very much reminds you of home. I mean it it could very well have been an inn, you know, back in uh, back in Steelbury. For sure, and for you sure. could easily dis. You could easily. I don't want to say disappear, but you could easily. You could easily blend away, very easily, right? You you find a corner that doesn't have as many of the uh, uh, the flames licking the lights of the flames licking that corner more of the shadowy side of things from the from the fireplace, and you just you know kind of relax. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, sort of relaxing. I'm still, you know, my brain is still whirring yeah, away. But, but, you, but when, so, when you hit this chair, are you slumped? Are you st tall and stern? Yeah, I'm probably you... a bit slumped. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so Nam Fudo kind of looks at you, right, and she gives you a side. You know, she can't. You, she's not. She's not hiding that she's looking at you, right? She's. She knows. Yeah, I don't meet her gaze. Yeah, and she kind of looks at you, and she sees the bottle. And you pop the bottle, and you see out of like the you're like you're you're looking down at the bottle, or you're looking down at the table. You're doing something, but you've got her in your your peripheral, right? And she she kind of looks at you for a second, and she gives one of these, and she turns around and she grabs a single wine goblet, and she looks back over at you, and she just slowly walks over, and she places it on the table in front of you. And then she turns around and walks back behind the bar again. Okay. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I keep sitting there and yeah, I take the goblets and as, as she, as she leaves, as she turns and leaves, I kind of, you know, glance up, glance up at her and I, you know, I take the goblet and I, I, I fill it and I take a drink and I sort of, just sort of fortify myself a little bit, and and, and then I and then I head over to the bar. And then you, I'm sorry. Then you do what, sir? I, I head over to the bar towards uh, you know to, to Nam Poodle. So she, she kind of looks. So I've always kind of so just so you know, out of character, totally out of character, right? Nam Foodle is is loosely based on Guinan from from Ten Forward. Oh, nice, nice, <laughs> right? Nice. She, she was. So I want you to kind of imagine, like you know how. How Guinan has that that very just it's a very calming voice, mm. but like you can tell that when she asks questions, like it's very I don't want to call it intrusive, 
but you you know how you like just can't you can't ignore it. Right? Oh yeah, yeah, very direct. Yeah, yeah. It will not necessarily direct. Like well, it draws info. Out. It draws. Yeah. Like she asks the right questions that kind of draw info sure. out. Of you. But it's never to be done in a manner that is like. Right. She's not trying to gain any any. She's not trying to gain anything on you. Sure. Right? Sure. So just kind of imagine that type of an interaction. So she, she's back behind the bar, and, and the first, she looks at you, and she... Did you bring the goblet back over, too? Uh, yeah, with the wine in it, yeah. Okay. Still some wine in it. And she says, That's awful expensive wine to be enjoying alone. Um, well, you're, you're, you're more than welcome to join me, Nambrudel. Oh, I, I, I wasn't asking for a glass. I just... It's, it's not very often that... That I see somebody with something that good, and I mean, she recognized it immediately as well, right? Sure. She's a bar purveyor, and and um, that is from that is from Steelbury. You know it well. Um, it is it is one of the um, one of the mushroom wines from from your area, and it is, but it is probably the oldest bottle you've ever seen that is not behind lock and key. Um, you 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 know you have. But <laughs> I don't want Dimitri to get any ideas here, but you have some very expensive wine here, right? So going coming back into character. Um But yeah, that's I mean, and you know that. You know, she's I mean, you're you're drinking Louis the Fourteenth, right? I mean, we're we're going hot and heavy here. And but and I and I would also say that you would know enough to be careful not to drink too many glasses of this, because it's a it's a strong wine. Fair, fair, yeah. In, in terms you know, of not, go sorry, ahead. Go I was just saying, in terms of the expense, I'm kind of not really caring about that now. I'm sure. I'm probably, sure. Probably, probably the, there is part of me that doesn't want to get too inebriated. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and then she says, "No, no. I just, I've, I've, I've just, I've never really seen a bottle like that. Not shared. Mm. Loot, loot. It's interesting. Loot from our, from our adventuring in, uh, in at the manor." You found it. In the it, it where, are the, where are the others? They they don't understand the value of a wine like that. Uh, they have their own business to attend to. For now, uh, we are split. It was a party. We will we will regroup soon after we have uh, undergone our uh, uh, each of our tasks. So then, um, then she kind of looks down at your chest and kind of noses forward, like, and she goes, "It seems like you're missing something." The symbol of my of my holy order, yeah. Um, it is uh, it is no longer a physical part of me. Uh, it, it no longer exists physically, and I'm afraid this is you know paralleled by you know that my lack of my lack of faith. Uh, I I am I am can only say that I am no longer. Yeah, you know, a disciple of the of the chief engineer. Um, the the events that I that I saw in the catacombs uh, have uh, have changed me. And when she says, when you say that, she doesn't even skip a beat, right? She doesn't. It, it doesn't surprise her. She's more than likely very surprised inside, right? But she doesn't show it. It's it, this is very much the barkeep in her, right? Like. You know, somebody could tell her that you know, I've, I I caught my wife cheating on me, you know, and then and, and the conversation would still continue. And she says, "Well, that's that's an interesting turn of events, considering where you were before you journeyed to the manor itself. That's a that's a quick transition, isn't it?" I've spent my 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 youth and my my years researching uh at the forefront of the the conversions between you know electromechanics and spirituality and and this has led me to this to this close to this close relationship with 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 the chief engineer it has led me to able to be able to harness the power of the chief engineer to 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 heal others and to perform uh, other tasks i do not deny the existence of this entity, um, but what what happened in the catacombs was 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 very troubling to me. A man died. I'm not unfamiliar with death, but the cause of his death was all too familiar. I was responsible, and I came to realize that I am I'm only an engineer. I'm no healer, uh, 
and that is pretty clear. And of my deity, well, he is no god. What what deity would let an innocent man die? You know, why is my intercession necessary to provoke the chief engineer into action? Why did my god abandon me? So, you can see her just contemplating this a little bit, you know, like a good bartender would. Is this a rhetorical question? Is this a question he's asking me? Is this a question he's actually asking the chief engineer in my presence, right? Because you're, 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 again, as a good bartender, she wants you, she's expecting you to just keep going with what you need to say, right? She's, she's as much counselor as she is psychologist as she is, you know, purveyor of fine drink. And well, people die every day, Elliot. I, I don't understand. Why you would think that the chief engineer now would all of a sudden intervene in that? People die at the end of their long lives, and you know, with with good reason. That's natural. But you know, an, an innocent man, you know, taken away, you know, in, in his prime for, for for no reason. Clearly, clearly, the chief engineer has the power to affect these events. When I when I ask for his help, if I do so in a timely and effective manner, which I failed to do on this occasion then he then he acts why why is that necessary i'm well, why 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 you know why will he not act you know on his own accord has he no morality is he, you know has, has, has he no knowledge of right and wrong does he not understand is he some kind of child tell me of this man that fell that troubles you so the man's name was Faps. He was one of the brothers who had uh, recently moved into the Tulloch Manor. One of the brothers that uh, that prompted our party to to travel to the manor at the behest of Kalon and uh, and check that events were were calm as we hoped, and as it turned out, they were not. And he fell in battle with a, a great demon called Molaram. Um, he was not a nice man. He was not my friend, that's for sure. He was a bit of a bell end, but I could have saved him, and I failed in my duty as a healer. Was was he a just man? Was he a good man? For for all that I knew him, he was he was a a brother, and he was filled with. You know, further to 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 find and try to save his own brother, who who also it seems perished along with him. He uh, he 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 was treated. He treated his 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 men, his servants, fairly, as far as I know. Um, so in, in in so far as I could tell, he was a good man. So it's it sounds as if he led a good life and 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 died a valiant death. Would you? Would you have the chief engineer rob him of that? Valiant. Valiant, but needless. Everybody I touch, everybody I heal, could have died a valiant death. But they don't, because I'm there to heal them. I, they don't, because the chief engineer at my behest, you know, fills them with his vigor and restores them. But what about what of those uh, who don't have uh, somebody to heal them? And what of those who I'm too incompetent to save, like Faps. But again, I'm going back to the question, which is, would you have the chief engineer, or any deity for that matter, rob an individual of their life and ultimately the way that they meet their death? If, if, if Faps had, had gone willingly to his death, then... You know that's his decision, but as far as I know, you know he 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 would have preferred to continue living, and so yes, I would. Yes, I would have the chief engineer help all in need. I would have the chief engineer, you know, bring up our our whole society if if he if he would. But clearly, he has no interest in doing so unless unless asked in specific situations. So then, so is this more of a situation of? you acquiescing your responsibilities 
to the chief engineer and being upset that not all things are made perfect? Or is this a question of whether or not you're doing what it is the chief engineer is asking of you? And I, and, I, and I kind of break down a bit, and yeah, I've been getting sort of you know frustrated and a little bit sort of wild, and I, I kind of you know I, I, I drop to the to the bar, and my my head's in my hand, and I spill my glass, and there's wine all over, and I'm, and I'm I, I sort of say like, I'm, you know I, I I'm not here for a philosophical debate, damn food. I'm, my 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 sense of self is broken. My sense of you know my my my. My, my 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 faith in my own abilities and the my faith in the 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 you know the goodness of my of my deity you know this 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 creation this entity that i've that i've worshipped and researched for my you know for my entire life pretty much you know what 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 is he why is he you know what why does he act like that i i don't know i don't know i'm just i'm just done with him and i'm done with i've done with what uh what i what i've been doing So she pulls a, a, a bar towel out and she straightens your glass. She just a very, you know, a, again, very, she, so she's, she's very deliberate with all of her movements, right? Nothing is fast, but it's also not slow, right? She, she tilts your glass back up. You left the bottle over at the table, right? Yeah. Okay. So she tilts your glass back up. She takes a bar towel out. She's not upset, right? She's not showing any. And she she slowly wipes up all of the wine. And you can hear her say, oh, such a sad waste, right? And, it, you know, she just, but that's just a comment, right? And she cleans up the whole bar while you're, you know, having your breakdown, if you will. She's not acknowledging it at the same time, but she continues and she... That's... It's interesting when when someone eschews the beauty of the world around you and simply ignores what is obviously a great gift and she kind of nods over to the glass you know the glass of wine right and, and you can tell that she's talking about how how amazing that wine is right and how in your in your uh, God, I don't I don't want to, in, in your in your current state of mind, you literally just dumped over half a glass of what is some of the most expensive wine that you will ever drink, and you couldn't even care less, right? But her, you know, and 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 she's she's literally speaking to that fact itself. Yeah, so I I kind of I I see that, but I also kind of in, in a way I kind of understand it as a metaphor as well for you know my ability to. You know, channel the chief engineer and you know heal people and stuff. And I kind of, in a sort of, uh, this sort of breaks through to be a little bit, and in the sort of a, only a little bit, and in a sort of, um, uh, a sort of a careless way, I, I say, well, I, I suppose it's better to do something than do nothing. You know, maybe maybe the chief engineer isn't you know what I once thought it was. Maybe. Um, Maybe it isn't some kind of benevolent deity, you know. Who knows? You know, maybe it could. Maybe it does have the power to to save us all. Maybe it does have the power to create a better society, uh, and it doesn't do that. But ultimately, I suppose you know there is a gift here, which is that I I didn't save Fap, so I I should have done, but I couldn't. But I have saved others. Maybe that's uh, maybe that's the. Uh, Maybe doing that little is better than doing doing nothing. Give me, can you give me one second, Elliot? Sure, sure, sure. Give me one sec. You're mine now, chat. Let's get Jimmy banned from Twitch, shall we? Oh shit, he's back. Pretend I didn't say anything. So walking down, so at the top of the stairs, <laughs> the top of the stairs, you hear a very, very familiar voice. <laughs> and you look up and it's Rolock Dunnackle, right? The gentleman who delivered the message that um, that 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 your master had, had fallen. 
Ah, Elliot. I thought that I had heard your voice down here. And oh, I, I've lost uh, sound, Zoe. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, no, I can't yet. Yeah. Okay, and he walks slowly down the stairs, deliberately again, and joins you at the bar. And, and, and Nam Foodle pulls out another glass, places it in front of him, slowly walks over and grabs the bottle that you've opened, walks back and pours you both glasses, and then places the bottle in front of you and then moves off to another part of the bar, you know, uh, cleaning and, and pretending to not be around any longer, of course. I see, uh, I see you finally returned, Elliot. Tell me about your trip. Tell me about your journey. I see a broken gnome before me. Well, my, my head is still sort of bowed and in my hands, and I kind of turn turn and, and, and glance and turn turn back to the to the bar in front of me, and I say, it's good to see you, Rollock, um, but th this isn't this isn't a good time to to interact with me. This isn't a good time to talk. I am, you know, I am, I am not where I should be right now. I am not in a good place to, uh, to, to, you know, to interact with somebody like you as, um, you know, a, a, as well as I should as, as befits, uh, you know, a person that I have, you know, well, good. then we'll just, for. then we'll just talk as friends. This oh. is beautiful wine. Thank you for the glass. And he tilts, he tilts the glass to his lips and, takes a very light sip again somebody who knows exactly <laughs> somebody who knows exactly you know how to drink wine like this right sure and he and he's any he, any he he holds it in his mouth for a few seconds swallows it he smells the wine itself and um and sets it back down you know Elliot there were there, there was a time there were times when when the church always wasn't is what it is what it is now when the church always wasn't what it is now. There were times when there was always a wonder of whether we should be fully logical or fully emotional. There were times when, you know, if you remember back to the, to the Holy Noman Empire and Nope John Paul II, and when he was trying to take us to, a, to an area that we did not feel comfortable with, a lot of decisions had to be made. And always there was the chief engineer. And always there were his words of guidance. Sometimes I like to go back and think about those times and how tough they may have been in comparison to anything that we are facing now. Well, Rollock, you're more than welcome to take the bottle. Um, I, I have a second bottle that I was planning on leaving with Nam uh, but you're, you're more than welcome to take... What remains of that one? I'm sure you'll appreciate it more, more than I have. I'll be honest with you. I, I never cared. I never cared much for the church. Although, I never cared much for the church. I never cared much for for Nope John Paul II. Although I was, um, you know, I've spent a lot of time, you know, researching the chief engineer and 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 working, using his his abilities, um, the. Um, the, the, the church itself never held too much interest for me. You've always been, from my knowledge, a very logical individual. Thank you. And sometimes that logic can be used as an excuse, not by you, but by others, as to why the emotional side of things never makes sense just as those who carry the emotional side and choose to flourish in that blame the logical side for things that they do not understand. And I've always found that those who carry a balance in them or attempt to carry that balance because it is one of the hardest things that we ever do are the ones who actually end up finding more answers to the questions that they are looking for. I appreciate that perspective and and I agree with you that you know my emotions have often been you know suppressed under um under the sort of the, my overwhelming ah, but but are they if you look at how you're reacting if you that you've spilled the glass on this bar the way that you're reacting now 
Well, they're not anymore. It seems like something I'm... something in me is broken. Something in me has changed. Something is broken in all gnomes, Elliot. All gnomes carry a burden of one kind or another. You are simply finding yours, I believe. My, my. Those who those who, who are chosen to leave Steelberry and who, who go out into the world, whether it is as archaeologists, as priests, as teachers, as historians, they always return with much heavier burdens than they leave with. You are no different. And my burden is to know that my God is uncaring and I am in incapable of properly utilizing what he can offer. That's a heavy burden. Elliot, you have no children. And... I have a robotic squirrel. <laughs> you do have a squirrel. You have no children, Elliot. And, and when, when you do have children, you find out faster than you ever wanted to find out that that child has their own path. And that if you attempt to hold a child to the pathway that you have chosen for them, it either breaks the pathway or breaks the child. We can guide our children. We can show our children what it is to be good, to be evil, to be indifferent, to be tolerant. We can show them all of these things so that when they experience these things in the world, they are prepared for it. But the fact is that every gnome must make their own path. And I think the chief engineer knows this more than anybody else. I have questioned my religion more times than you will ever know. But that does not mean that you will not have burdens that I will never understand. You are your own gnome, Elliot. You are traveling your own path. You must continue to travel your own path. Do not think for a second that abandoning your own path gives you any hopes to change what has happened in the past. Oh, I have no delusions that I cannot change what I have already done. I cannot bring back the dead. Or oh, I have a fine now, I suppose. But perhaps it is time for a new path. Perhaps it is time that I operate using the power of the chief engineer, but without worshipping him, without worshipping it as a deity. Perhaps I can use his power without you know, venerating him. It. But, but do we worship him, or are we looking for that which he set us on our path to search for, which is knowledge? Knowledge of all kinds. Knowledge, again, the historians, the, the, uh, the engineers, the artisans, those are all different paths that, that rarely cross one another. And yet, his ability to set us upon those paths, yet, uh, yet to allow us to find our own discoveries in those paths, that is the true worship of the chief engineer, Eliod. I firmly believe that if there was no religion, that the gnomish peoples would still seek the knowledge in those areas. When we discover something new, when we find a history, when we are able to apply one to another, whether it is applying what we learn from an ancient text to the histories of another peoples, that is how we are worshipping the chief engineer. I firmly believe that his goal or her goal or their goal, whatever it may be, is for us to continue to seek knowledge in its fullest. And knowledge can only be sought in both the logical and the emotional, Eliad. It cannot subsist in one or the other. On that, I am in full agreement with you. And you, Rolog, are a knowledgeable gnome. What do you know of the old gods? Uh, 
The old gods predate most of history. What I am telling you now, Elliot, I tell you because of our relationship and because I firmly believe that if you were to ask your old master, he would be honest with you in these in these areas. We know not a lot about these old gods, though we know several of their names. We know that they pre predate the dragons, and we believe that they may even predate the chief engineer, though we are not sure of the relationship of one to the other. We simply understand some of the relationship there to be that of, say, an exploding volcano that later, later becomes a mountain range. One simply predates the other. Whether or not they have a place on this plane in Solarian, we do not know. We just simply know that they have existed. There are several tablets in Steelbury that mention them. We know that one specifically, Noalius, is the father of dragons. We know that there are several who are dedicated to mathematics, logic, geometry, artisanry, blacksmithing. So there must be some, some, some basis of creation therein. We also know that there are some who may be dedicated to raw emotion. Those we fear the most, for we do not know what that truly means. Can you imagine a being that has pure emotion, but nothing to keep it in check, no logic to keep it in check? Timmy G. Uh, thank you for the information, Rollock. I've been charged, myself and my party have been, have been charged by uh, an, an old god, a purported old god called Night Demon with a grave task and I I desire more information. I desire to travel to Steelbury and interrogate the libraries there, the Gnomeberries there. Where did you see this being? We found him in the catacombs beneath the Tulloch Manor. He was he was summoned by an unpleasant creature called Molaram. In search of power, he found more than he could handle. Very interesting. And this old god, this night demon, you say? Night demon. What, what of your relationship with him? He was a dick. But what did he ask of you? What is... Why are you bound to him? He has in his possession three human girls. I suspect the daughters of the previous owner of Tulloch Manor, Laura Tulloch, who went missing uh, along with their mother. They haven't been seen in many years. They were with him. And for no rhyme or reason that I can discern, despite claiming to be a creature, at least parts of logic, he made a deal with us that he would release one girl to us, keep one for himself, and kill the final girl. To me, this is not acceptable. I must find a way to prevent this. I, After the events of the last few days, I am in a poor state, and I fear if I am not successful in this task, well, my adventuring days will be behind me, that's for sure. This does not sound like much of a deal. No, it's a terrible deal. It's also not a deal. The guy, the guy said he was going to make a deal, and I didn't agree to it at all. And then he said we made the deal. He's he's full of rubbish. He's some kind of. I'm convinced he's not an old god. He's he's some kind of trickster spirit or something. Elliot, what binds you to this deal? I am I am bound by by. 
by that which my god is not. I am bound by my desire to to save lives. I am bound by the life of the, the you know the girl who you know who will kill, and the one that he will uh, you know take. But what binds you to the deal? Could you simply not walk away? I I I don't know what the fates of the three girls would be. Um, and also, I suspect that um, that I will be forced to interact again with Night Demon, regardless of uh, what I intend to do. Which of your two sides do you see leading you on this path? Your logical or your emotional, Elliot? On this, both sides are in unison. Uh, my emotions, of course, you know, yearn for these people to be saved. But also, that is the logical outcome because through each of us, you know, through the, you know, through the success and the survival and the industry of each of us, you know, is society bettered. So I, I, I see this only as, uh, um, you, you know, favorable from both perspectives. Through the propagation of life, society is always bettered. This I do not disagree with. However... The question still stands because the first thing that you told me of this individual was that he is a dick. Oh, yes. Massive dick. This does not seem like the logical musings of a gnome. Well, I, I admit that my perspective may be somewhat colored by my feelings towards him. He was a most frustrating individual to interact with. But I think that my... The, the, the outcome of my thought process would be the same if he had been as pleasant a person as yourself. It seems your path is a very unique one, Elliot. I wish I had more advice for you. But logic would dictate that you need to explore this to its end, if only for the knowledge. And emotion would dictate that you must save all three daughters if you can. I know that you already know this. This is no big breakthrough for you. But I would encourage you to figure out and to seek out within you why you feel bound to this person, to this old god. I applaud you for not simply walking away as you could have. I applaud you for tying yourself to the lives of three individuals that you do not know, for this is noble. But I would also tell you that the loss of personal faith in what you have grown to believe in what you have grown to accept as the result of what happens along this pathway is not a wise thing to allow to occur. The chief engineer you alluded to earlier, why does the chief engineer not simply make things better or right or keep those alive whom would suffer death, maiming, dismemberment, disease, whatever it may be. It is within his power. Is it within his power, Elliot? It or is. ultimately is it within our power as a font of him? And is it not just as important for great men and women to join the council chambers of their gods, goddesses, deities, demigods, as it is for them to stand upon the earth of Solarian and make this place whole as well. Do you think that the chief engineer was not of a glorious attitude when your former master joined him at the council chambers? Are you suggesting that the chief engineer is unable to act, but via ourselves? 
Possibly. We will not know this until we meet him ourselves. Possibly his tests are whether or not we will use the power that he is able to channel through us. Never forget the lessons of the gnomes who've fallen away and have lost their powers, Elliot. Who have, or those who have chosen to use them for themselves only. Who have taken both knowledge and religion and kept it for themselves. Not shared with the nombraries. Not shared with the other races of Solarian. For they suffer very, very, very poor, poor deaths in the end. They are separated from the chief engineer. The chief engineer, in my estimation, and again, we will not know this until we meet him or her or them, is that we are here to discover the histories, to discover new mathematics, to discover new geometries, to discover new artisanry, to discover new ways to combine whether it's the elements or religion to those elements. If we were given all the answers, what a boring place this would be. On top of that, I firmly believe that if the chief engineer had all the answers, that the chief engineer would have no purpose for us in the first place. So perhaps through the exploration and the living of our lives, we add to the existence that is the chief engineer. Perhaps you are right. I cannot bring it in myself to to act as I once did. I cannot cannot find it in myself to to venerate this entity. But is it... that not necessarily growth, Elliot? Well, every it's, it's note, change. Every note that it changes growth. Every let's go back to the analogy of my children. Every child eventually outgrows his father. This is the dream of all gnomes before you, Elliot. Hopefully one day you too will learn of this. I look forward to the day when I look down from the council chambers and my children will have surpassed my level of knowledge. But they must do that of their own accord. They must fall from their faith on occasion. They must question life. They must even question their friends and their families. Well, the questions I have asked and the answers from the chief engineer have been, you know, lacking thus far, it's as far as I can see. But at least I think you have convinced me that the right thing to do is to continue to wield this power. Uh, no no good can surely come of me eschewing its use entirely. Do not think of it as wielding the power, Elliot. We do not wield the power. We are fonts and vessels, nothing more. We have seen those fall away and lose it. Something that can be taken away is not something that can be wielded. We are individuals who have been placed in a position to be able to utilize the healing magics and the combat magics in defense of those around us, Elliot. We are placed here for that purpose. And when an individual gnome decides for whatever reason that they will either take advantage of that or eschew that, they lose that. It is not wielded, Elliot. It is ours to utilize as we see fit in the glory of gaining knowledge. If you continue to move down this pathway of allowing your emotions to determine how you wield, I shouldn't even say wield, how you utilize that power, 
you will continue to question whether or not you should. And that is the worst possible place for a gnome who questions himself and questions his decisions does not make decisions in a timely manner that will then move situations forward. You learn nothing in Steelbury. The true knowledge is here in the world. We attempt only to prepare you for that which you will interact with, not to tell you how to make those decisions. Are you suggesting that there is no need for me to return to Steelbury, or are you suggesting that I will not find what I seek within the Gnomeberries? I am suggesting that you are in a new classroom, Eliod. The classroom of the world. And that that classroom will change daily, and you must learn its lessons. Returning to Steelbury at times is necessary. You will have to return if only to add your knowledge to the nombraries there. We must return with knowledge. We must study what is there to understand what is going on. You will begin your own journals soon, as your master did before you when he gifted you his. Steelberry is a noble location. But we learn nothing there. We learn in the application of the world. Can we learn what the Elvish peoples can teach us if we do not leave Steelbury and travel to the Elvins? Can we learn what the islands to the east could teach us and the Orcish folk if we do not journey there? Do we rely on them to journey to our nombraries to bring their knowledge? Of course not, Elliot. But make no mistake, lives will be lost. Simply because you cannot save them all does not mean that that was not their destiny. You will have friends on this journey, close friends who will fall. You may have friends, close friends who will betray you. That does not mean that the journey is not a noble one. Elliot, you must find your own path. Constantly relying. Let me rephrase that. The reliance upon that which you place your faith in the chief engineer cannot be a crutch. There have been many great gnomes before us who have lost connection with the chief engineer based on their location and their circumstance. Yet they found their way through. This does not mean that neither they nor the chief engineer abandoned one or the other. That was their path. You must not question the path, Elliot. You must travel it. And if you think for one second that any moment of our lives are predestined, you are wrong. Um, as as Rollock speaks, although n not everything that he says resonates with me, I, I begin to understand that I have to, to reshape my my relationship with the chief engineer and that I can continue to to heal, I can continue to um, you know, ca cast spells uh, act as a font for the chief engineer, but w without having necessarily the same relationship uh, with that I had before. So do you say that out loud or is that in your mind? No, that's, that's sort of how, how, I'm, how I'm feeling. I mean, I've said a little bit of that to him already, but... Um, yeah, I, 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 I say, you know, those certainly are some, some words of wisdom. You know, I'd, I'd express nothing less than from a, from a gnome of your, from you, of your stature, Olok. Thank you. Thank you very much for talking to me. I know I'm not the best conversationalist right now, but I, I appreciate your, your words. 
I find myself at a bit of a crossroads as well, Elliot. I journeyed here to bring to you the message of your master's falling. We know that this is a time of, 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 of great celebration for his journey continues on. Yet there is a hole in my heart as well and within my soul because of his passing. I felt the same way when my parents passed, Elliot. Great people with great relationships leave great holes for the space that they took up was great to begin with. His gift to me was one that I could never have imagined coming. And now, Elliot, I see that I must gift it to you. For I firmly believe that this was the path that I was set upon. And he reaches into his, his robes on the inside and he pulls a very familiar thing. It's, it's the, the holy symbol of the chief engineer that your master used to bear. And I it's a of, platinum. Yeah, I kind um, of, so I'm, I'm taking it back as it comes out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is no, I, I must, I must say this, Elliot. This is no formal ceremony. You are still of the coppers. You cannot continue that journey. However, without an understanding and a reminder of what started that journey. Your first holy symbol was given to you by your master, and I see it's no longer with you. I must assume that it is either broken or lost. Take this one. Take it with you on your journey. You need it more than I. I reach out and take it back with me. I, 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 this is an incredible... This is an incredible offer. I, you know, I can, I can only, you know, um, you know, words word can't describe my, my thanks. It is not an offer, Elliot. It is a gift. You must understand that there are things that happen around you that you will have no control over them. This is one of them. Oh, hang on a second. Sorry. Did I break him again? I drank a lot of wine. Quick toilet break. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is a gift, Elliot. You have no control over this. Take it. Focus on the logical side, but do not eschew the emotion. Focus on the emotion, but do not eschew the logic. The central path is the key. You will be drawn to one or the other over and over again, but try to center yourself. Um, I will I will do what I can. Uh, Rollock, thank you for delivering this to me. I... I appreciate that although Master Druth had gifted it to you, you know, you, you saw fit to to pass it on to me. Um my my faith shaken, I was I was no longer able to invoke invoke my deity, but perhaps now and perhaps with the new holy symbol I will be able to do so. Now shall we cheer your cheers your formal master with what's left of this wine, my friend? Oh that sounds good. Let's go. So Namfoodle returns right right away with that that bottle, fills both glasses, and comes with the second bottle as well, and just places it kind of next to you. To logic and emotion. And he raises his glass to you. Uh, and I, I I raise my glass in return. And I say to logic and emotion and to, uh, you know, 
flipping up night demon. Cheers. And he takes, he takes, I mean, he drowns the whole thing. Just done, right? Just drinks the whole glass. Oh, God. How I miss, how I miss the ancient shroom, mushroom wines. Thank you for a great conversation, Elliot. I think I'll stick around here for a little while. I don't think Steelbury needs me quite yet. Hey, and he stands up. He looks around the room for a second. He gives a quick nod to Nam Foodle, and then he goes back to the stairs and back up to his room. As he as he said his goodbyes, I I, I nodded him and says it was an honor to uh, to talk to you, and you know I, I look forward to you you know to seeing you again as you stay here. And I drink my wine and I kind of choke a bit. It's quite strong. I try to down it in one, but I get halfway down and I'm like coughing a bit and you're know, spluttering all over. So, so where's Eliad now? Uh, I mean, in in a better place. Like, yo, know, by by no means is he, yo, know, completely, yo, know, happy, happy go Larry now. But uh, you know, he's he he appreciates what he appreciates what both Namfudel and and Rollock were saying. Uh, and he's also kind of, dis despite how he's, um, you know, despite how he's been shaken, and just despite his sort of his lack of faith, he's he's still um, uh, sort of sh shocked and awed by by the by the platinum cogwheel, by the by the holy symbol of of his old master. You know, it's such a he, even in his current state, it's such a sort of a powerful image, such a powerful object. He's kind of like a bit overwhelmed by it, and that sort of bring, brings him sort of back to his sort of normal state a little bit more um and 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 as i said he i'm still uh, i'm i'm thinking now that you know perhaps there is a, a way forward a, a way to proceed with what i was doing but with a bit of a different perspective on things and a bit of a different perspective on the chief engineer and what my role is you know with, with regards to him so what what do you do with it um um uh, well, i guess i um i i took it on the uh I mean, I'm not really sure where it was before, to be honest. Uh, maybe on a on a chain. I've got a I've got a chain. Yeah, it's on it's on a beautiful, beautiful plat. I mean, this is again not not getting all over Dimitri out here. This is quite, you know this is a platinum. Your your holy symbols are are as near pure of that metal as possible. Obviously, if you had pure gold, pure platinum, pure they would bend, right? So you've got to have some other metals mixed in with them to firm them up a little bit. Um, but so, but it is, I mean, it is on a, it, it's on a, a, it's not gaudy, right? It's, well, what would you say, Elliot? Maybe two inches, three inches across? It's not huge, right? The, the yeah, actual, about three inches across, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the chain is very thin. It's, it's, it seems like it should break, but it doesn't, right? Like, like not from the weight, but just from the fact that it just doesn't seem like, Something that is utilized day to day, and whether it be in ceremony, graduation, whatever it may be, that that it would hold, that it would that you it would be able to be utilized daily. I guess is the best way to put it. I don't want to describe it as dainty. It's not dainty. It's just not. It's not like a thick rope chain or like big links. But it is. They're platinum as well, and you know it's meant to hang midway breast down. Yeah, sure, sure. So I I, I take it, and I you know. I sort of, you know, reverently drape it over my neck and sort of, you know, put, you know, it goes below my robes, you know, my robes go over it. So. Yeah, t typically you would keep it underneath your any, any, if you were in a ceremonial position, it would be on top. If you were in a, a worldly position, which mm. you are, it's tucked away for, you know, safety. Yeah. People know who you are. People know you're a follower of the chief engineer. It's not, you know, you're not hiding your faith per se, right? If you will. Mm -hmm. So what? Where does where does Elliot's mind go next after this? So you've got uh, you've got a full bottle of of beautiful mushroom wine. You've got another maybe quarter bottle left of the other. Um, and you're sitting in Nam Foodle's rowdy gnome, and you're at the bar, and and Rolock has just taken his leave of you. Where where what's what happens next? Uh, well, I I I sort of sort of wave over Nam Foodle or go over to her, and I say. Um, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to to my rooms for the night, and you know, I you know, 
here. Um, oh wait, did 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 Rollock take the? Uh, yeah, I, I I offered Rollock what remains of the 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 bottle that we were drinking. Did he take that or? or no, what? he did not. He left it there after he drowned the big thing. Okay. Whether he forgot it or whether because I did hear you say that. Yeah. Whether he left it for you to kind of just hey finish this off tonight and just relax. Sure. Right. I mean, it's it. That's kind of. Yeah, well, I, I, I say to Dan Foodle, you know, here is, you know, a bottle and a bit of the wine, you know, keep one bottle for yourself. If uh, if Rollock wants any more of the other wine, you know, please, please give that to him as well. But otherwise, otherwise keep that. I'm, I'm done for tonight, though. I don't want to, um, I don't want to overdo it. And my mind is still whirring and I'm still, I still intend to sit up half the night thinking about, you know, Night Demon. I'm, I'm completely obsessed at this point, basically. And I've had a bit of a sort of a break, what with the chat to Rollock and, you know, my sort of, revelations about my you know, my relationship with 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 the chief engineer and whatnot but but it's still there you're know, worming in my brain you know this this problem that needs solving perfect so i think that's probably a great spot to end the actual episode itself that's a that, that that's about as good a spot because now um remember that you you will have had another day to do whatever well you we can do that all out of not out of character but like if there's anything you want to do if not we'll just assume that you rested that you came down and had some meals, right? You walked around town a little bit, really, really contemplating, you know, what what's going on with this uh, with this individual. I had a shave. Um, I'm sorry. I had a shave. Nice. And okay. I went to the hat shop to pick up my hat. That's right. Yep, you've got a hat there waiting for you as well. <laughs> That's good. So you've got a new hat now. What does it look like again? It's red, and and pointy. It's red and pointy. Very nice, Elliot. I'm wait. I'm uh, I'm waiting for next episode to see if it is indeed red and pointy. Um. So yeah. So now we have we have uh, the the out of character stuff that is the the actual leveling up. So yeah, I yeah. completely forgot about that. To be honest, <laughs> so, yeah, I, so I've not looked at that. Did at you all. did you by chance pick your spells or no? You can wait if you no. didn't yet. We can wait till next time. That's fine. Just maybe let me know, yeah. Message me. Yeah, may, maybe I'll I'll message you tomorrow or, or something. That's fine. Yeah, because we've got we've got we got. I know yeah. we got another episode on Sunday, right? Yes, yeah. So I did um, call that maybe. But yeah, if you'll open your character sheet there, let me show you how to level up real quick, just in case you forgot. Uh, yep, opened it, yep. So if you go under the tab for features, which is the fourth over from the left, attributes, inventory, spellbook, features. Uh-huh. Yep. You'll see where it says cleric level four. Just pull that drop down uh, down and just click it to level five. It should next ask you to roll for um, hit points or hit dice. Yes. Is that a D8 or it a D10? Is a D8. Okay, so you need to roll a six, seven, or eight. So um, when you roll the die, if you roll less than a six, so the way that I do um, level ups for hit points, there you go, perfect. Oh, I rolled two. <laughs> it's okay, so you roll the seven is fine. Um, so now it should say like I think next. Yeah. So click that, and then you should go up to it. Should change you to level five, and your hit points should go from forty to forty-seven plus your con bonus, I believe. Well, it's giving me destroy and dead automatically as well. That's brilliant. Because that's that's another I I I sent you that message as well. That is another that's an ability mm. of yours. Good. So now you've gone from oh wait, so you're at fifty, right? Were you mm. at forty before? Yeah. So now you've gone up to fifty. So you got your seven plus your plus three from your constitution. So oh oh right okay nice nice. Yep. Um, if you go to your spellbook tab, uh -huh. you'll also notice that you have um, third level two um, spell slots now. Yep yep. And when I give you your spells, those will drop in there. Um, we will take at the beginning of next episode, we'll do a long rest for everybody. So everything is restored. All the hit points are back and all of that sure, good stuff. Sure, sure. So what other, um, oh, also your proficiency bonus. See at the top of your um, thing where it says level five now. Yep. Oh, yeah. Proficiency, proficiency bonus three. used to be plus two. Now it is plus three. Oh, nice, nice. So your your basic proficiency bonus has gone up as a result of that. So things that'll affect different spells, that'll affect different different other items. Okay. Are there any other questions, my good friend? Uh, no, I, I think that's good. I'll take a look at this spell list and uh, I'll make my make my choices. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, I had a, this is this is a brilliant. So again, you know, um, uh, each of you will at the at the beginning of the next episode, and I went over that with the others as well. Each of you will kind of just give a quick synopsis of what kind of happened to you. So Jim will talk about little Jimmy. 
Um, you know, Dimitriev will talk about what he did. We'll do a quick little three minutes from each of every year, and then we'll get that next episode rolling. But fantastic episode. Jim, if you want to close us out. Glorious, I will. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Elliot and Jack Bull, being glorious, as, al- as it always is. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.